Hi, everyone. I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm here today with Anthony Boyle, the Irish actor who has prominent roles in not one but two Apple TV Plus limited series that recently premiered, the nine-part World War II epic Masters of the Air and the seven-part historical drama Manhunt. Um, Anthony, on the eve of your 30th birthday um, in June, you're suddenly king of the prestige limited series, and you're playing a hero in one and a villain in the other. Did you shoot these back to back? Yeah, we did. We had about um, like two or three months off in between. So just, just enough time to squeeze out a decent mustache. Yeah, I was gonna, well, I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's talk about Masters of the Air first. Uh, you're playing uh, Harry Crosby, a uh, real life Air Force Lieutenant with the famed Bloody 100th bomber group in World War II. How did you know the best way to play Crosby? He's, I mean, he's he's really arguably the the most important character in the series as our narrator. Yeah, he um how did I know how to play him? I had a I I was sent I originally auditioned for another role in the piece and um I I got sent uh I got sent the scripts to read and I was reading the scripts and I really, really liked Crosby because everyone else felt very cool. In it, and he was, you know, thrown up on people, and and felt very like, just didn't feel like he belonged in the story. Which I thought was an interesting, interesting person to follow. Um, and then I googled him, and um, and and I found this ten minute clip of him speaking when he's about seventy, and he just had this like amazing kind of rhythm in which he spoke, and had this kind of you know that that, that uh, this kind of just. The way he, the way he moved, the way he spoke, I found very, very interesting, and um, I thought I want, I want to play him. Thank God for YouTube and all that, right? I mean, it brings the past, the too. past into focus. Um, mm -hmm. To have that quip, my God, that just had to be, it had to be gold for you. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Is um, so you. Uh, did you interact with his family at all? Did you did you meet them? Did they tell you any anything about him? I've met a couple of real people, and sometimes I've like brought them on set and had them there, and I've been very involved with them or involved with the families. But this time, I just wanted to um to 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 do it on my own and not get involved, and um and then like. Five minutes before the premiere in LA, someone comes up to me. He's like, "Oh, by the way, all of Crosby's family are here. They're all they're all ready to uh, to 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 meet you." So I felt very um I felt very nervous, but they they seemed to like it. I, I met his, his his eldest kid, and um he shook my hand. He said, "We were told that we didn't we weren't expect to see like our father, but I, I feel like I feel like we got dad back." And it was such a such a good moment, man. Full circle, you know. Wow, we felt like we got dead back. Oh my god! Yeah, it was nice. Man. It was, it was, you know, I sort of thought if the critics pan me now, it doesn't really matter. You know, I got like a decent seal of approval from from the sun. You know, that's the ultimate approval. Oh my god! Um, to have it actually be from the family. Wow. Um, you uh. What an incredible cast you had in that series. Uh, Austin Butler, uh, Barry Cogan, uh, Callum Turner, and you and the rest of that, the rest of the people there. How did you get on with them? Yeah, good, man. They're all um, they're all great. You know, they're all just some of the best actors working today, I think. So, you know, I've I've watched their careers and I've watched them in different roles and been really inspired by them. So it was good to uh, to work with them. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. You filmed uh, Masters like at the height of the pandemic in England, right? I mean, that uh, that had to lengthen the shoot and probably complicate it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we were having people <laughs> dropping out every week. You know, people were falling off. People were getting COVID. People were, you know, having to be isolated in groups. So scenes were changing. Cast was changing. It was it was a nightmare at some points. But we had a good. We had, our producer Gary Getzman was on set every day, and he he, he was. That guy's amazing, man. He was really, he was really cool. Keep making everyone keep a calm head, and um, you know, no matter how much 
money was being spent or whatever. He was he was just so making everyone feel very cool and very relaxed. And it was uh yeah, it was pretty good. Did you ever meet uh Tom Hanks or Steven Spielberg? I mean, here you've got this incredible legacy with these guys who did the Pacific and Band of Brothers. And this, I guess, is really kind of the third link in the World War II trilogy that those uh, gentlemen put together. We did we, did that put any added pressure on you that like, oh my God, look at look at look at what we're what we're involved in here. I don't know if it was pressure, I think like more excitement. Like, you know, I grew up watching Band of Brothers, the Pacific and all, you know, Steven Spielberg and Paul Max's work, like around like you see with Private Ryan, you know, all these war dramas that they've done. They really are the go-to guys to tell those stories because it's such a passion for them that they really do care. And um yeah, I th they were they were great leaders that to have to 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 lead us through. And then you go straight from the 1940s, Anthony, to the 1860s. Yeah. <laughs> from a war hero who killed, you know, for the greater good to portraying Abraham Lincoln's assassin, John Wilkes Booth. Clearly the polar opposite uh, of Harry Crosby. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I think that's why I wanted to do it. I, I always want to do kind of like the opposite of what I've just done. I, I'm not really interested in ever repeating myself. And um, we just finished, I just finished playing Crosby and I was like, you know, I, he was motivated by such goodness and such light and was, a, a, you know, quite, quite nervous character. And you keep that in your body when you're filming. And then... Uh, yeah, the role of Booth came through just as we were wrapping up on 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 Masters, and I thought, oh, this is exactly this is exactly what I want to do next, and um, auditioned for it, and, and luckily they they wanted me to do it. Although I auditioned for it dressed as Harry Crosby on, on the set of Masters of the Air, so I had like the whole slick back hair and the button up cardigan, so I don't know if I look very Boothy, as our our director Carl Franklin used to say to me. You're looking real. Um, I don't know if I look too boosty or not, but uh, yeah, it was good to it was good to go from one extreme to the other. Yeah, although Anthony, uh, see if you agree. I mean, Harry Crosby probably he killed do dozens or maybe hundreds of people, but because he was doing it for the greater good and the greater cause, it's different yeah. than and, and the real villain is the one who killed one man. I know it's I, it's interesting that you say that. I actually, I thought about that when I was. When I was filming it, I thought like, you know, just in terms of optics and in terms of, you know, who writes history and yeah, but I, I, I could I could see maybe why why Crosby struggled with it more. You know, a lot of the a lot of the killings were indiscriminate and you know, a lot of civilian casualties and you are doing it for the greater good because, you know, the Nazis are gonna take over. But yeah, and, and he's more emboldened in his choice of killing one person because he thinks that it's a political, uh, you know, it's a political act and they're going to overthrow the government that are running the country into the ground and he's going to, you know, become this great white saviour and all that stuff. Yeah. Did I read that you based your initial knowledge of Booth on an episode of The Simpsons? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did read that. Yeah, yeah. That was... Um, it's, I mean, growing up in Ireland, we you know we don't do too much American history. The first my first introduction to to Booth was an episode where Bart is playing Booth and Milhouse is playing Lincoln, and he says "Hasta la vista, AB." And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, um, that I was remember that. I, you remember this? It's such a good. I do. Episode. I actually remember that. I, yeah. I actually what. This is a complete aside. I actually wrote a book about The Simpsons. Um, you wrote a book I, about The Simpsons? The first eight seasons of the show, I, I wrote the episode for the first eight seasons. And I thought, and when I got to the end, I thought, well, that'll be the, that'll be the whole run of this show. And of course, that was, you know, 25 years oh, ago. I'm obsessed with The Simpsons. I could talk to, we could do a whole interview on that one. I think seasons three to season 11 are my favorites. Oh, wow. I'll, I'll have to give, I'll have to get you a signed copy of my book. Oh, I'd love to. Oh, I, gen I genuinely would read that, man. Anytime any of my family get me anything for Christmas or whatever, it's always like Simpson themed. So I would genuinely, I would genuinely love a copy of that. Program. I will, I will go through your. I consider it done. Um, well, thank you, bro. I will read that. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Um. So, so, but, but, so seriously, how did you get insight into the kind of bastard Booth was? I mean, did you, 
did you base the way you played him on any previous on-screen villains? I don't know, maybe Daniel Day-Lewis in Gangs of New York or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, I did actually. I did look at that. I did look at that performance. There, there was a little Daniel Day Lewis going on there, which so I say with, with 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 you know, as as a you know, complete compliment. Yeah, I I I looked at that and I I looked at Daniel Day Lewis and There Will Be Blood, and I looked at uh, Walking Phoenix in um, uh, the one with Philip Seymour Hoffman. But right. Uh huh. Yeah, I, w- I watched that one, um, The Master. Because, uh, I mean, if you're trying to rip off Joaquin Phoenix and Daniel Day Lewis, you know, you're, there's only so much room for error if you're trying to just rip those guys off because they're both uh, both incredible. And then I, I based them off a lot of letters. I, I'd written all the, I read all the letters he had written from when he was 15 to 26. And um, mm-hmm. just got a, a sense of who he was from, from, from those and his sort of descent into into madness and his descent into, into racism. And um, you mentioned the mustache. I'm guessing the mustache we see in Manhunt was real. Um, uh, did you have to water it regularly to make it grow? No, I didn't have to water it regularly. Luckily, I can get a mustache. I can't. I don't get too much here, but the, the mustache, for some reason, grows, grows loud and proud on my face. So we, bit, because we shot it out of sequence, about eighty percent of it's my mustache, and then twenty percent is a fake mustache, which I hated because you'd be doing a great scene, and then suddenly, like you know, the, the mustache would just pop up, and you're there trying to like, put it down again. And, ah. Yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare, but it was. Uh, yeah, I prefer to do my own real one. Although you can still do the evil twirling of the mustache. Uh, exactly, exactly. I got a couple of twirls in. I got a couple. Of twirls. <laughs> That's it. So Anthony, talk to me about Cowboy Camp, um, as I think you called it. Uh, I read that the production hired a group of real cowboys to teach you how to ride a horse and be convincing about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'd never ridden a horse before. And uh, I got there and I wanted to get a couple of weeks early so I could just soak up the culture and, and the accent, that kind of thing. And um, they said to me, all right, we want the Cowboy Camp. And I, I showed up and there's like these like seven cowboys and all smoking and chewing blades of grass or whatever. And I was like, I'm gonna just, you know, masculine and the kids with this and just walked up to the horse and I said, How do I get on them? And one of them was like, figure it out. So I was like, God. So I climbed up on this horse and I feel, you know, I'm feeling quite cool. I feel like John Wayne or something. And I say, how do, how do I make him go? And the guy goes, kick him. So I kicked the horse and we start trotting a little bit. And I kick him again because I wanted to go faster. And I kick him again. And suddenly we're like galloping so, so quickly. And I say, how do I make him stop? And he says, figure it out. So I just <laughs> pull on the reins and we stop on a dime. And one of the cowboys comes up to me and goes, how do you know how to do that? And another cowboy from the back goes, he's Irish. It's in his blood. <laughs> and then That's suddenly, perfect. From like there on in, that was my first day at cowboy camp. From like there on in, I was like part of the crew. I would bring them whiskey, I'd bring them tobacco, you know, like as an offering. And um, yeah, we just rolled for like three weeks and I got pretty good at it. I had a lot of fun doing it. Did they teach you how to drink whiskey too? No, I taught them how to drink whiskey, but they they, they taught me how to, they taught me how to ride horses. Well, I, you know, figure it out. Um, I could have done, I could have taught you that. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, right? Figure it out. It's not a, it's not the best lesson. That's and and it was so they you didn't you needed more than one guy cowboy camp, but they gave you like a, a half dozen or seven <laughs> or eight. No, there was a ranch that they were all on. You know, they were like there's so many different horses in the show. And you, like you know, sometimes there'd be fifty horses on set only you know eighteen sixties. So you need people wrangling different horses, and you know it was it was a lot. Well, was there ever a, a moment where you wondered, uh, Anthony, damn, what have I gotten myself into? I mean, you know, if having to learn, having to learn the stuff on the fly. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do feel like that. But it's that for me, that's half the joy. Like I, I like I like knowing nothing of a time period, of a person, of these skills. And half the job of the joy is going, okay, I'm gonna go live in Savannah. For a couple of months i'm going to experience this new sort of life this new culture and really just dive into it and 
that's that's half the joy for me like you know it's, it's the doing it's it's the rehearsal it's the research is um is 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 the bit i find most interesting and i guess you know a lot more about john wilkes booth than you ever thought you would huh no if there's ever a pub quiz and john wilkes booth gets brought up i'll um i'll probably get the question right you read uh some letters and such that he wrote too huh? a lot of the, there's a lot of historical artifacts that exist yeah yeah, I read all the letters he had written uh, when he was 15 to 26. And you get a real sense of, of who he was when he's 15. He's um he's kind of like a rambunctious young kid. And then by the time he gets to, I'd say, 20, he's writing quite like racist stuff, quite angry stuff. He's saying things like the black man is enslaving the white man in America. He's saying some crazy, crazy stuff. Um, and his, his brain has just been just completely rotted by this racist ideology and you in his letters to his friends or lovers you you see this like descent into madness it's pretty crazy to read i'll bet now this is all after you spent three years portraying scorpius malfoy on uh on stage in, in harry potter and the cursed child what first right. in the west end and then on on broadway you won an olivier award nominated for a tony was there a moment where you thought your future was going to be in the theater uh yeah I mean I I I sort of I want to go back into I was meant to do a play recently and then the dates didn't work I I love the theater I I I would happily just work in the theater for for the rest of the time it's a uh, it's great it's like nothing it's like nothing else it's a real sort of actor's medium you know you're the control of the piece the edit the, the full experience is two hundred two thousand how many people whatever in a room you're in darkness no one's on their phone. You know, it's just this pure sort of communion that you have with the audience and you're receiving or telling a story, these parables. It feels like probably the closest to like what, you know, it would have been like for for actors thousands of years ago, you know, like around the hearth, or around the fire, these sort of druids or priests or whatever telling these stories. Like you know, there's a real sort of, I don't know, like religious or like a omnipotent sort of experience in the theater I was find. Different challenges, uh, like doing a lengthy television shoot versus a long running play, I imagine. I did it take you a minute to kind of get out of the Harry Potter, Potter rhythm? I, I know you also did the plot against America for HBO yeah. in between, right? Yeah, well, I, I just stopped shouting all my lines. I think on the first day, it's, you're trying to, you're trying to back wall with 2,000 people. You're like, Hi, how are you? And then they're like, the same guy is like, just get down a little bit. And then you, you by osmosis, by osmosis, you pick it up. It's the same sort of principles. You're just trying to be truthful. But, you know, there's, I had to sort of take it down a, a little notch for, for screen. Um, but I love it, man. I, I really I, I really do love it. I'd love to get back into a place and... Do you think you'll get back to the stage at some point? I'd hope so, man. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to go back and do do a play on Broadway. I, I had a lot of fun there. Um, I've never really done a play properly in Ireland, so I'd also like to do to do that. You know, like uh, or Casey or Martin McDonough, like a good sort of Irish play. You know, I think that'd be good fun. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, you can see both Masters of the Air and Manhunt streaming over Apple TV Plus. Anthony Boyle, best of luck this Emmy season. Happy early 30th birthday to you. And thanks, uh, thanks for joining us today, Gold Derby. Thanks, man. And, and buy this man's Simpsons book. We got to get this man's. We got to put <laughs> his book. Get this book. Let's go. Thank you so much for the testimonial. Uh, take care. Cheers, bro. Thank you. Cheers.